According to Einstein, three optical properties are responsible for formation of spectral lines in atomic spectra. Those three processes are the first one is absorption, second one is spontaneous emission and the third one is stimulated emission. These three processes are associated with Einstein coefficients. We know the two Einstein coefficients, A coefficient and B coefficients. Now, these three, according to Einstein, these coefficients are measure of the probability of that particular process. Now, we discuss about Einstein coefficient of absorption. Absorption, we know that the atom which is present in the ground state will take up that HNU energy and will go to the excited state. So, for that, consider two energy levels E1 and E2. E1 is the ground state and E2 is the excited state. Means, initially, the atoms are present in the ground state E1 and E2 will be the excited state. So, in absorption, when a photon of energy H nu energy is incident and the atom which is present in the ground state will take up that H nu energy and will go to the excited state E2. Means, this process is called absorption. So, for this absorption, the you have to give H nu energy. Means, incident energy will be there. So, the probable rate of transition from E1 to E2 that is called P12 is directly proportional to U of mu where P12 is called is called probable rate of transition from E1 to E2 and U of mu is called incident energy density right so the probable rate of transition is depends upon or in, depends upon the incident energy density so P12 is directly proportional to U of mu now here proportional is there to make this proportional equal we have to multiply with some constant right so p12 p12 is equal to some constant that is b12 into u of mu so where b12 is called einstein coefficient of where b12 is called einstein coefficient of absorption right and u of mu is called incident energy density Next one is Einstein coefficient of spontaneous emission. In a spontaneous emission, the atoms are initially in excited state E2. E2 is a excited state. So, atoms are initially in excited state after lifetime. The lifetime of an excited state is 10 power minus 8 seconds. So, after lifetime, the atoms which are present in excited state will return to the ground state by emitting H nu energy. This process is called spontaneous emission. In spontaneous emission, the probable rate of transition P21, the probable rate of transition is P21 because the atoms are coming from excited state to the ground state. So, the probable rate of transition is called P21. So, P21 is, is equal to A21. Here, the probable rate of transition from E2 to E1 is independent of the incident energy density because we are not incident any energy. So, here the P, P21 is independent of the incident energy density U of mu. So, that P12, P21 is equal to directly equal to A21, where A21 is called as a Einstein coefficient of a spontaneous emission. Here, there is no incident energy density. That's why P21 is equal to A21. Next one is stimulated emission. In a stimulated emission, when a photon of energy H nu is incident in the atom which is in the excited state E2, then that atom will take up that H nu energy and will return to the ground state E1 by releasing two photons. This is called stimulated emission. Now, the probable rate of transition from E2 to E1 that is P21. The P21 is depends upon the incident energy density because the atom is coming from E2 to E1. So, the probable rate of transition P21 is directly proportional to U of mu because we are giving incident. So, it is depends upon the P21 is depends upon the incident energy density U of mu. Right? To make this proportional equal, we have to multiply with some constant. That constant B21 is called as a Einstein coefficient of stimulated emission. So, so these are the three coefficients. A, B12, uh, A21 and B21. Now, we derive the relation between 
three Einstein coefficients that is b12, a21 and b21. So we know that b12 is called Einstein coefficient of absorption, a21 is called Einstein coefficient of spontaneous emission and the b21 is called Einstein coefficient of stimulated emission. So to derive the relation between these three coefficients, first we will consider two energy levels E1 and E2. E1 can be considered as a ground state, E2 can be considered as a excited state. Now the total, now the probable rate of transition for one atom to ground state to the excited state means if one atom is a transferring or moving from ground state to the excited state this transition the probable rate of this transition can be occurred can be written as p12 and if atom is coming from excited state to the ground state this transition the probable rate of this transition can be written as p21 right so now the probable rate of transition from ground state to the excited state that is p12 is equal to p12 is equal to b12 into u of mu this will consider as the equation number one it means for one atom the probable rate of transition is p12 and in e1 energy level contain how many atoms n1 number of atoms so for n1 number of atoms the probable rate of transition is n1 p12 is equal to n1 b12 u of mu this will consider as equation number two. similarly the probable rate of transition from e2 to e1 that is p12 for one atom it is p12 right so it may be combination it may be sum of uh, spontaneous emission plus stimulated emission so the probable rate of transition from e2 to e1 for one atom can be written as p21 is equal to sum of Einstein coefficient of spontaneous emission plus b12 into u of mu. So this part is for spontaneous emission and this part is for stimulated emission. So equation number 3. This is for one atom. So E2 contain how many atoms? E2 contain N2 number of atoms. So for n2 number of atoms equation 3 can be written as the total number of transition from e2 to e1 that is n2 into multiply with n equation 3 multiply equation 3 with n2 right so n2 e21 is equal to n2 a21 plus b21 u of mu equation number 4 so equation 2 is representing the total probable rate of transition total transitions occurred from e1 to e2 and equation 4 is representing total transitions from e2 to e1 right now under equilibrium condition the total transitions from e1 to e2 is equal to e2 to e1 so we have to equate equation number 2 and 4 so by equating equation number 2 and 4 we can write n1 b12 is equal to n2 b21 right so from those equations we can write n1 sorry can be written as n1 p12 it is equal to n2 p21 right so from those equations we can write n1 b12 u of mu and n2 b21 sorry n2 a21 plus b21 u of mu so multiply n2 inside in our left or right hand side right so by multiplying n2 n2 a21 
plus n2 b21 q of mu now the this part on the right hand side this part we bring to the left hand side right so this can be rearranged this equation can be written as n1 b12 u of mu minus n2 b21 u of mu is equal to n2 by a21 now in this equation u of mu is common right so by taking energy density u of mu common we can write u of mu is equal to n1 b12 minus n2 b21 is equal to n2 a21 so from this we will keep u of mu on left hand side and remaining all the terms will take to the rh side right hand side right so u of mu can be written as n2 by a21 into n1 b12 minus n2 b21 right now in the denominator uh, we will take n2 b21 common in the denominator so by taking n2 b21 common so we get u of mu is equal to n2 a21 by so by taking common n2 b21 into you can write like this n1 b12 by n2 b21 minus 1 right so this equation will consider number 6 or 5 this equation will consider number 5 right so again we have to uh, modify this equation so we can cancel n2 n2 and here n1 n2 number of items in ground state number of items in aggregate state right so these equations we can derive by using maxwell distribution formula you can derive by using maxwell distribution formula so according to maxwell distribution formula according to but according to maxwell distribution formula n naught is equal to n r is equal to n naught into e power minus e r by a b t right suppose if we take r is equal to 1 if you take r if we take r is equal to 1 then n1 is equal to n naught into e power minus e1 by a b t and if we take r is equal to 2 n2 is equal to n naught into e power minus e2 by a b t right so this where this formula we derived uh, this formula is from maxwell distribution law right now by taking the ratio of n1 by n2 right so by taking n1 by n2 we get n naught by n naught into e power minus e1 by a b t by n naught into e power minus e2 by a b t right so n naught value n naught value get cancelled by simplifying we will get e power e2 minus e1 by a b t right and we know that uh, from Planck's radiation law e2 minus e1 is equal to h nu the difference of these two energy levels is equal to h nu right so n1 n2 by n1 by n2 can be written as e power h nu by a b t right so this equation we will substitute n1 by n2 this equation we will substitute in equation 5 in equation 5 we will substitute here n1 by n2 is there right 
So here we will substitute this equation number 6, right. So by substituting equation number 6 in 5, we get u of mu is equal to a21 by b21 into 1 by e power h nu by kbt into b12 by b21 minus 1. So this equation number 7. This will consider as equation number 7, right? Now we will compare this equation 7 with Planck's radiation formula, Planck's, Planck's radiation law formula. So according to Planck's radiation law, the energy density of a black body U of mu is equal to 8 by h nu cube by c cube into 1 by e power h nu by a b t minus 1. So, this is from Planck's Planck's law, Planck's radiation law, right. Now, we compare these two equations. We will compare these two equations. By comparing these two equations, instead of a21 by b21, we have 8 by h nu q by c q and instead of yeah, b12 by b21, we have 1 here. So, by comparing these two equations, so 7 and 8, we have a21 by b21 is equal to 8 by h nu q by c q means the ratio of Einstein coefficient of spontaneous emission A21 by Einstein coefficient of stimulated emission B21 is proportional to cube of the incidence frequency cube of the incidence frequency. Similarly, B21 B12 by B21 is equal to 1 means the Einstein coefficient of absorption is equal to Einstein coefficient of stimulated emission, right. So, these are the relations between Einstein coefficients. Thank you.